Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning and welcome to worship, everyone. I want to give you a heads up about a few things that are a little bit different about our worship service today. We're going to have some extra prayers all throughout the service, not only um, because we observe Memorial Day tomorrow, but we are remembering those who have died in our nation in the last week uh, due to pervasive violence. So I would invite you to prepare your hearts and minds to fully enter into this space with your full selves, with all your emotions, with your entire being, and we join together in community, worshiping and trusting God. And I know you were handed these little slips of paper as you came in, whom do you love? And we'll be thinking about that later. So now we breathe together, we sing to God, and we love one another. Please rise as we sing. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, who forgives all our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. 
Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. be seated. Children of God, we have a calling and a purpose. God invites us into celebrating God's grace in Jesus Christ, accepting all unconditionally, and growing in God's call to serve the world. My friends, this is who we are, and it's who we strive to become. We are the church, a people that are called, gathered, and sent in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O oh God, form the minds of your faithful people into your one will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found. Your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Before I invite the kids up, I'd like to offer another prayer, especially uh, as we observe Memorial Day tomorrow. God of peace, you are with us in times of trouble and you sustain those in harm's way. We give you thanks for those who have served their nation and died to protect it. We thank you for their dedication and their willingness to lay down their lives for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, through the prophet Isaiah, you proclaimed a day when people will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up sword against nation, neither will they learn war anymore. We pray for that day. We pray for your peace in all places and for all people. We pray for leaders of all nations to work together and keep your people safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now I would like to invite the kids to come up, and we're going to gather right here. So if you would like to come up, we're going to do a, a project together, right? Right up here. Let me get my stuff ready. Oh. 
All right. Hi. Hello. This is going to be perfect. Okay. This is a project I thought we could do together today. If you want to come take a, a seat somewhere around this giant piece of paper. Okay. And we're going to choose some. A lot of color options. Would you like to pick two of your favorite colors out of this pile? Just decide which two you would like. Hmm. I think I... Okay, just have two just because you never know. You need some options. Okay. Okay, before we start, we're going to do an art project together. Oh, good. Come on up. Come choose some colors. We need more markers. Pick a spot around the paper. Okay. Hello. You can pick two colors. So you have two colors. Choose two colors that you like. You too, Molly. Pick two colors from the markers. Okay. Purple? Great. I brought a colorful, a colorful piece of art to show you before we work on our project together. What do you see in this picture? Uh, the, last supper. the Last Supper. Okay, we have a picture of The Last Supper. So this, this person is Jesus. Jesus. And who are all these people sitting around him? The disciples. The disciples, yeah. And look, do you notice anything about the disciples? Any, do you notice anything in this picture? It looks like there's both men and women and so there might even be kids. So we have all sorts of people. What do you notice about the table? There's some um, bread on there. It looks like a cup. And it's really colorful. Look at how color. Have you ever seen? Look at our table. We don't have quite the same colors, do we? we that's okay. I think together we are going to design a giant table on this piece of paper and we're going to add people around the table together. Does that sound good? So your job and my job is to draw some people. Let's start with a table. Okay, how about I'll do this and then you start drawing. I'm just going to do a plain table to start. There's, okay, there's the table. Would you take one of your markers and will you draw yourself? around the table. Start with you. Okay? All right. Adults, you're just going to hang tight for a while. We're going to take our time. You'll see the end result pretty soon. So let's see. Draw yourself somewhere around the table. Okay. That's a good spot. Anywhere on this whole as long as you're somewhere on the paper. I, I forgot to give myself eyes. There we go. Now I can see. There's a lot of details you can add. We're getting, I see some ears. We got some really good legs, arms, hair, glasses, noses, smiles. Some really good feet. Okay. Oh, that is the carpet. That's, we might have some extra color on the carpet. Ah, uh, you're welcome. All right. Next, let's, they're washable. Let's do somebody in your family next. Okay. Somebody in your family next. Who did you decide to pick from your family? This is looking really good. I'm proud of you all for focusing. There's some big smiles on this page. And also, somebody has really excellent vision. There's a really good. Oh, yeah, you can see it on the big screen. How cool is that? The people can see our, what we're making. Neat. Okay, you ready for your next person? Okay, 
The next person is somebody you've never met before. Like somebody you don't even know. Yeah, I like just draw a person. Just a regular person. You might see like a regular person in the grocery store or maybe at the park. So I'm going to draw somebody I don't know. Let's see, what would this person look like? Oh, maybe I'll draw a baby. We don't have any babies on here yet. I'm going to draw a baby that I don't know and haven't met yet. Okay, little happy baby. Swaddled. Swaddled in the... In a blanket. This is looking really excellent. <coughs> that looks great too. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's several babies now. We have, um, did anyone draw any grandpas or grandmas on here yet? I, I better get now. I'll draw a grandpa. You know what? I'm even going to draw my grandma who's not alive anymore. I'm going to add somebody I love who has died. If there's somebody who you love who has died, you can add them too. I'm going to draw my grandma. She had curly hair and glasses. And she always made the best snacks. So I'm going to have her hold a little bag full of my favorite seasoned crackers. Do you have anybody you can draw? Here's my grandma. She's got a big heart by her. You ready for the finishing touches? We are going to draw a cross by every single person on this page. Because every single person on this page and every single person in this whole room, and every single person in this whole world is somebody who God loves. So let's draw crosses as reminders to all of us that all of these people, whether they're alive or whether they have died, whether they're babies, whether they're old, whether they're kids, whether they're grown-ups, no matter what, Everybody is loved by God. And maybe we'll learn to love each other that way too. Do we let, double check and make sure there's a cross by everybody? Did we do it? Okay. I would like to say thank you to each one of you for drawing yourself, your family, friends, strangers, and everybody you've drawn on this. I think we did a great job. What do you think? Is it good? Okay. We'll let the adults see it at the end of the service. We'll take it back and we'll let all of you see it. Okay. Thanks, everyone. You can go sit down. The first reading is from Acts chapter 16. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the most high God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them 
and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself for we are all here. The jailer called for lights and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in the, his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he said then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. Word of God, word of life. The Gospel according to John, the 17th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus prayed for his disciples. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them ever as you have loved me. Further, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me wherever I am, to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me, before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Jesus prays for his disciples and those who will come to believe in him because of the work of those disciples. And he prays for unity, to be one as God is one with Christ, to be one with each other, to be one. We started our service with confession and forgiveness today. I don't know if you noticed that was something different. We haven't done that in a few weeks. We've been having Thanksgiving for baptism, but today we confessed our sin. 
And I think we have this idea of sin like it's the bad things we do to each other on a personal level, but in our confession and forgiveness, we confess the brokenness that is within and around us. When we turn away from the truth that we really are one, we belong to each other. We belong to each other. That's what unity means. Maybe we don't agree on everything. Maybe we don't always get along. But at the end of the day, you and I are as human as each other. And all of the surface things that we let divide us can fall away and we can meet each other because as God and Christ are one, so are we. United by God's love. United because of love. Because of God's love for you and God's creation. So I printed out these little tiny slips of paper for you to hide somewhere in your house or in the back of your cell phone case or in your shoe or in your wallet or in your pocket and and you find this piece of paper that says, Whom do I love? And it will remind you where your starting point is after times of tragedy and pain. It will remind you of where your starting point is after days that are good and bad. It will remind you of God's love for you and creation And who do you love? And how do you live that out? Every moment of your day. So we confess when we forget we belong to each other. And when we forget we belong to each other, we have forgotten that we belong to God. I forget sometimes. But this week I was thinking about what it means to belong to each other in a family or in a school. Like, what was it like to be a parent taking your child to school this week? Or what was it like to be a school teacher or an administrator going back to school after Tuesday? And what was it like to be a grandma or a grandpa? Or what was it like to be a pastor in Uvalde, Texas, and now the funerals you're doing are for children? For those of you who are exhausted and are looking for a place of peace and safety and comfort, and here I am up here talking about really hard things, and maybe you didn't want to hear about the hard things today because it's too hard to look at the hard things anymore, I ask that you just hang with me. For those of you who have felt disturbed and sad and angry and broken this week, you can feel disturbed and sad and angry and broken here today. Because I belong to you and you belong to me and you belong to each other. And thousands of years ago, Jesus must have known we would need this prayer because he prayed it for his disciples and everybody who had come to believe in him to let the divisions fall away and remember that we belong to each other and we belong to God. So we feel it. When something happens, like a mass shooting, we all feel it because we know the truth that we belong to each other. So what does unity look like? What does unity look like in the face of death of innocent children or elders shopping at a grocery store in Buffalo? What does unity look like when it seems like we get hung up on wherever we get hung up when we're trying to fix this. Where's your starting point? Maybe some of you don't know where to start. Maybe the week has just been too overwhelming and too hard and you're tired and numb. Or you're nervous because pastor's going to say something political and somebody's going to get mad. But I'd rather be called political than see children die. So you can call me political if you have to. I I would rather belong to each other 
and make sure kids are safe in school and elders are safe in the grocery store, that our life can be good and beautiful together. I've been thinking also a lot about Memorial Day because Memorial Day is like a national day we set aside to grieve together and recognize the pain our whole communities have been through because of war and death every year. We have a chance to recognize what has happened and we grieve and we say not again. We do that with each other for Memorial Day. We have a day set aside to remember the wound and look toward healing. So are we going to have to do that for more than just Memorial Day? I don't want anyone to die, not people in the military, not kids going to school. What does healing look like? Healing looks like looking directly into the wound. And that's really scary and really hard. But for the sake of kids, for the sake of teachers, for the sake of you and me, I think we can do it. Who do you love? In our gospel reading, we heard this almost a flow chart. We start with God, who's connected to Jesus, who's connected with the disciples, who's connected with all the people who will come to believe in Jesus because of the work of the disciples. We have this flow of God's love and this connection, and, and I'm in them, and they're in me, and Jesus gives us this, this great source of where our energy and love and life will come from. And it will come from God because God is in Christ and Christ is in us and we belong to each other and that's our starting point. Love. And love, I want to talk about love for a second because sometimes we hear the word love and I think, we think loves, love means being nice or not complaining about something. Love means acquiescing or being a doormat. Sometimes love looks like a protest. Sometimes love is angry. Your anger is okay because anger is a sign your values have been violated. And you don't want to live like this. And nobody should. Anger can be clarifying. Anger can be from God. And then once you dig underneath your anger, why am I angry? Oh, it's because I love you. And I don't want you to live in hell. I'm angry because I want kids to not be traumatized at school. So underneath the anger, if you keep digging under your anger, whatever you've been feeling this week, I wonder if you can find that nugget, that little question that I handed out on that little piece of paper, who do you love? Who do you love? And if it's kids, everything in your life is about making beautiful and safe and vibrant communities. Walk downtown and see the artwork today that kids in our schools have made, and it's joyful and bright and beautiful. Who do you love? Who do you love? Love is from God, and it always points outwards, and it's always expanding, and it doesn't get stuck in the places where we try to divide ourselves, it keeps going. When we fail to follow love, love is going to keep going. We can join in. So who do you love? And what are you going to do about it? God's love is stronger than death. And God's love will give us courage to act. And sometimes that does look like calling your senators. I don't know if you've done that before. I don't know if you're comfortable doing that. But it's something we can do. Because if you love kids, you want everybody to love kids. You want to see the evidence that people in power love kids too. So you might make a phone call this week. If you want to learn how to do that, you can talk to me after worship. 
Maybe you've been looking for your community. Like, who else is extremely disturbed by what's happening? And maybe you're trying to find the people that want to do something about it. Or maybe you checked in with people this week who you know make a difference every single day in the lives of kids or adults or whoever they love. A lot of people, a lot of you are sitting in here right now. Every day you go out to love people. Thank you. Thank you for that. Start with who you love. Start with who you love. And I love you. (laughs) I don't know you that well yet. It's maybe too early in my tenure here to tell you I love you from the pulpit. But I waited five years until the last time, and that didn't feel right. So I'm telling you now, early on, Why do I do this? Why am I here? It's because I love you, because God loves you, and God's love flows through me, and God's love flows through you. And that's why I'm saying any of these words today. In hopes, in hopes that you will have enough hope and energy to be able to share your gifts with the world, because when you do that, you will be making it better. Sometimes you have no energy left, and you can pray. One word, help. That's mine. That's what I go to. Just help. So if that's you today, sit there. It's okay. It really is. Jesus prayed for unity. And then the disciples had to carry on the work because Jesus was killed and Jesus was raised from the dead. And then Jesus ascended to heaven and guess who continued the work? Everyday people like you and me, as broken and beautiful as the next. So I have some hope, even now, because I see you and I'm starting to get to know you. Who do you love? And what are you going to do about it? Who do you love? God helps us with this. That's my prayer. Help us, God. I am going to invite us to turn to the screens for a moment. Because we have a chance to connect with all of humanity and we're going to say some prayers for those who were victims of the mass shooting in Uvalde, Texas over this last week. And I'm going to read their names out loud because these are people we love. At the end of each petition, I'm going to say, we pray, and you may respond, make us instruments of your peace. So if you would join me today in prayer. Let us pray. God, giver of life, you intend for humans to live together in peace. In this time of grief, we pray for your presence among us, that trusting in your mighty and gentle healing, we may live in hope. We pray, make us instruments of your peace. We now see the names of the children who were killed this last week. God of resurrection, we remember before you those who have died in Uvalde, Nevea, Jacqueline, McKenna, Jose, Eliana, Uzziah, Amory, Xavier, JC, Tess, Miranda, Alethea, Annabelle, Maite, Alexandria, Leila, Haila, Eliahana, Rogelio, and teachers Irma and Eva. We commend them to your eternal love. Grant healing and wholeness to the survivors who are wounded or traumatized and restore all whose spirits are maimed by such violence. That we may serve as your arms of care to those in distress, we pray. Make us instruments of your peace. 
God of righteousness, you have laid on our elected leaders the responsibility to protect our land, strengthen their devotion to our common life, and guide legislators to enact policies that address our plague of gun violence, that our government may support our search for domestic harmony, we pray. Make us instruments of your peace. God of compassion, we give you thanks for first responders, firefighters, EMTs, all who offer compassionate aid in situations of tragedy. Keep them safe, give them courage and sound judgment as they act, that we may join in support of those who risk their lives for others, we pray. Make us instruments of your peace. We pray for the church, O God. Give us your voice to plead for a society marked by justice and sustained by cooperation among all peoples. Train us to resist the lure of brute force, that by your spirit we may become words and signs of your mercy, we pray. Make us instruments of your peace. God of redemptive mercy, receive our prayers. Grant us to become your instruments of peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We have been made God's people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God to the Father, God of God, light from light, true God, true God. Be God has not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was in the of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became a true For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son has worshiped the Lord of life, who has spoken with the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. 
we gather our hearts for prayer, please keep in your prayers Tom Strong, the neighbor of Sherry and Brian Hoffman, who is currently hospitalized. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy God, make your people one as you and your Son are one. Extend the gifts we have been given by your Spirit to all people, especially those experiencing division or questioning your love. Jesus, Lord of life, hear us as we pray. Make worthy the work of scientists who look to the stars and planets, as well as scientists who look to atoms and molecules. Bring innovation and well-being to humanity through their discoveries. Jesus, Lord of life, hear us as we pray. Keep in our minds those who have died in war, both military and civilians. May we honor them by seeking peaceful solutions to the conflicts that arise among nations and peoples. Jesus, Lord of life, hear us as we pray. Grant freedom to all who are overwhelmed by chronic illness, depression, or constant worry, especially Tom. Open them to receive health and salvation through the Spirit's gift of faith. Jesus, Lord of life, hear us as we pray. Stir imagination and understanding throughout the church in the work of poets, theologians, and hymn writers. Lead us into new visions and fresh expressions of your presence. Jesus, Lord of life, hear us as we pray. Cause hearts and minds to action as we mourn the death of 19 school children and two teachers in Uvalde, Texas and the mental and physical injury endured by countless others. Lead us from death to life, from falsehood to truth. Lead us from hate to love, from war to peace. Lead peace, let peace fill our hearts, our world, our universe. Jesus, Lord of life, hear us as we pray. Unite us with the saints who have died and been raised in Jesus. Train us to wait with eager longing for your coming again, even as we sense your presence with us now. Jesus, Lord of life, hear us as we pray. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share signs and words of Christ's peace with one another. So grateful to have the opportunity to share the peace this morning and to continue sharing the peace everywhere we go. A few things I'd like to announce this morning. Uh, remember, next Sunday, we won't be meeting here unless it's raining, but 9 o'clock at Lincoln Park next Sunday for Pentecost worship, and we will be bringing food to share that does not require electricity or a lawn chair or a blanket. There are some benches to sit on, but bring what is most comfortable for you. A few other announcements that I have written down. 
Oh, yes, June 12th, we have new member orientation happening after worship. Yay, thanks be to God. Uh, stay for that and start building relationships with those who are joining us. We are so, so grateful to be able to welcome folks. Thanks again for continuing to support the ministries of Emmanuel. Who do you love? You answer that with money sometimes. Uh, and we give in many different ways, whether that's the offering plate or online. Thanks be to God for the ability to give out of our abundance. A quick note about communion this morning. We will be receiving communion with uh, two lines up the center aisle. Hold out your hands into which I will place a wafer. If you need a gluten-free wafer, please let us know. And then you may take a small cup from the tray, and that is de-alcoholized wine. Return the cups uh, to the baskets and to your seat by the side aisle. Most importantly, just like our artwork that the kids created with all the people around the table, this is the place where Christ makes us one with himself and one with each other. Everybody is welcome, so please come and eat. We stand and sing. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Lamb who gave himself to take away sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it and broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he blessed it and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. Amen. Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. Amen. 
remembering his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God. We ask you to accept our praise and with your word and spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with grace and receiving the forgiveness of sin be formed to live as your people. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your church now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. Come, God's beloved, and eat. You may be seated.
as you are able. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. God, the Creator, Christ, who loves you, and the empowering Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.